Sometimes a text is so familiar, we recite it often, that we don't pay careful attention to it. We don't think about it. When something is new and somewhat unfamiliar, then we stop to think about it. When you stop and think about the Shema and try to analyze it, all sorts of problems leap to mind. Some of them quite difficult. Let's start with the first line. Hear, O Israel, Yahweh our Elohim, Yahweh is one. Before I raise a difficulty in logic, let's address Shema. Why does it say here? Why is the here so important? Would it have compromised the idea if it had said see? Well, it says see in other places. There are some things the Torah says to hear, some things it says to see, and some things it says both see and hear. The word Shema does not only mean to hear, but also to understand. Let me give an illustration. The brothers went down to Egypt and Joseph is pretending to be Egyptian. And the brothers are conversing with him through an interpreter. And Reuben answered them saying, didn't I tell you saying, do not sin against the lad? But you did not listen. Behold, his blood too is being demanded. They did not know Kishomeya Yosef. They did not know that Yosef understood, for the interpreter was between them. Of course, Joseph heard what they said, but they thought he did not understand. That's what the interpreter was there for, to make him understand. Shomeya here means understand. In Deuteronomy, we are told we will be conquered by a foreign nation and sent into exile. And it describes the conqueror as a nation whose language you will not shema. A nation whose language you will not understand. So the first word here is challenging us to understand. Understand what? Understand Yahweh our Elohim. What about Yahweh should I understand? Understand that Yahweh is one. Now I can raise the first difficulty of logic. This is the great statement of Hebrew monotheism. Yahweh is one. Now let me ask you, suppose we are talking to an ancient Greek polytheist. He believes in 18 gods and we ask him, is Zeus one? What would he say? Of course, Zeus is one. When he says Zeus is one, that does not make him monotheist. He means Zeus is one, one of the many, one of the crowd, one of the gang. Saying that Zeus is one doesn't commit him one way or the other on there being other gods. Why should our statement, Yehveh is one, commit us to being monotheist? What has it got to do with monotheism? It does not express anything. When you have a proper name, the function of the proper name is to name one thing. To take a proper name and say it's one is to say absolutely nothing at all. Anyone who understands the language knows that the proper name names one thing. From this point of view, the great statement of Hebrew monotheism evaporates, has no content. This august statement really communicates nothing. Now you will understand why there is a gigantic literature on Yehweh's oneness. This is because you cannot take it straight, neat, short, and simple. If you do, it evaporates right under your fingertips. So what does his oneness mean? What does it mean? Yehweh is one. That is why he uses the word Shema. Understand, contemplate, think about it, meditate on it, focus on it. For indeed, Yehweh is one. How are we supposed to understand that?